Uh. Hello. Oh. So we're starting a new one. Here we go, guys. I've been just looking at this thing real quick. Um, I find a new, I just found a new fetish. I'm just, I'm just getting in this. Okay. Oh. I gotta stop doing that. My voice might be a little bit cracked now because I'm kind of a little bit tired, but probably gonna be here for at least an hour. I'm gonna be just chilling for a little bit. And well, let me just, sh just chill for a little bit while people arrive, and then we're gonna get straight into worlds. Okay. So, what are we doing right now? Alright, so I'm here, back with Worlds. Uh, following just straight through from the last lesson. Okay, so, let's just sum up what we did. It just made Classic Sonic playable, but there's a, well, Classic Sonic EX, but there's a little issue. Alright, so we're here in the, in, the, in the engine. We change into Classic Sonic EX. We have it right over there. It does our thing roughly well. Right? Then I switch back to another character and whoops! It's still there. <laughs> That's bad. I know why this happening. Let's go fix that before we do anything else. And okay. So we need to go into object manager, player, and this is something I forgot in the last lesson. That's bad. I'm not sure how we can fix that. Okay. Right, so object management player. Uh, we go into to uh, animation. Player, player, control, player animation, and we're going to flash your invisible. Okay, so here's the thing. In Sonic's event, we make have your other character invisible, except we forgot to make Sonic EX invisible. I am very smart. Right, so here's what you do. Just go, Sonic X, visibility, make invisible. Now, you copy this into every single character. Now imagine doing all uh, that I have done with like 14 or 15 characters. Man, it was a disaster. <laughs> That's one of the reasons why Spark's kind of a heavy game. It's because it runs on Click Team Fusion and it just does things that the team fusion is just not made to. Oh, I got added over here too. Come on. But yeah. This is another little thing we need to fix, and then I'm gonna get into the quote unquote powers we're gonna be adding in this little tutorial, lesson, lecture, whatever. Did I do everything? Yeah, I think so. Alright, let me save. Let's go back. Let's go over here. Stand up! We did a little mistake. It's, he's a little one pixel above the ground. We can't have that. The walking animation too isn't perfect, but let me run it. Let me test it. Alright, six, and now I can just go back fine. Alright, and here we go with our little classic Sonic EX. And I'm just showing it off, see what I can do, see if there's any issues on the feet, is it exactly right? Look at that. 
<laughs> the spring animation is this one. Oh, whatever. That guy, ha that has to be fixed later. Okay, so... Okay. Before we had quote-unquote powers and uh, other things... Well, let me just go to the summary of things we're gonna do. First of all, we're gonna add fluffiness. We're gonna add flashiness. We're gonna add some dumbass shit. Like, we're gonna add footsteps and we're gonna make... Not in that order, but we're gonna add footsteps and we're gonna make footstep sound. This is just to teach you some of the basics of things you're gonna do. We're also gonna add a little grounded animation, which is an animation that's gonna play when Sonic hits the ground and he's gonna do a little thing. Not only that, but we're gonna be making uh, I think that and maybe some like smoke effects when Sonic jumps or whatnot. Like just a little bit more flashiness so we can make things more interesting for Sonic. And after that, we're gonna add a couple moves to Sonic and those are the quote unquote powers. Uh, those are not in all the exact order, but I want to I need I want to add a little dash in similar veins to Spark. Uh, I want to add including an air dash, and I also want to add a uh, a backflip, which is like a higher jump if you skid and jump, just like in Mario. And I want to add a little double jump, a little custom double jump that doesn't use the electric shield. Just so you guys can grasp what I'm doing and what exactly is what this is. And I might even add more depending on what you guys suggest. So, let's see how, that, how it goes. Okay, so first of all, I'm gonna be preparing several things. First of all, since I'm gonna do the grounded animation, I need to have a grounded animation. So I'm gonna create a new animation, go to the bottom, click empty space, new, grounded. So... Then I'm gonna go over here, grab the first frame like, like before, I'm gonna add a red streak this time. So, I think if I should change music right now, I'll just keep it this. Alright, so I have the sprite sheet. I believe there is animation on Sonic's round. It's this one, I just don't want him to be tired. Let's use this one. Or well, let me check. I've got plenty. No good. We're just gonna use that one. That one looks cool. Also remember that since we picked the transparent color way back, it still remembers it. And don't forget, click a transparent color. Just don't forget about it. Right. Let's check it. Seems to be just about right. This is a little weird thing, but it might not even work, it might look bad. But I still wanna do it anyways. So just for a little fluff, I might change it one thing. Okay, stretch. Let's see if it actually does something when I stretch it. Yeah, yeah there we go. This is an interesting thing. You can change it and stretch and just, just, just click stretch. Stretch. If you click resample, it's gonna enter alias the sprite and it's not gonna look good. Oh. <laughs> funky. Hmm, might have to add the, the main frame for reference or at least a red line. Again, be diligent about those things. Those are important. And by the way, what I'm doing here is just a little... Okay, so here we have got, got Sonic stretched upwards and then we get Sonic stretched downwards and then we get Sonic normal. This is to simulate some kind of bounciness that would happen when Sonic just gets to the ground like boom. You know. If this is uh, an animation principle, it's called scratch and stretch I think. It's 
all wrong on so many levels. Let me see if I can do this. No, I cannot. <laughs> of course. Nice. The line is moving, but nothing else. It shouldn't happen. Cool. Alright, just so we can grab some little bit more fluff in there. Thank the shoes. Down here. Right. This is totally unnecessary, but I'm doing it anyway because it might be a little, it might be kind of fun. Also, let's change the idle animation to something a little bit, a bit cooler, just to fit our EX thing. We got this one over here, that looks cool, so I might as well. What the hell is this guy saying in chat? Uh, someone said there's something bugging me? Well, I'm... I'm just kind of tired. I'll be fine. Though. Don't worry about it. This is fine. I think this is fine. Yay! Got 16 frames of that. Have a little funny thing. Hmm. I just keep it that way, it's fine. I could have added a little bit more fluff, but it's cool enough. Oh, and by the way, when you mess around with the sprite, you'll notice something. Over here, the skin itself loses its little icon. Like the icon changes. So it lost the blue border, and we're just gonna add it back. So I'm gonna make the light blue. And yeah, this color picker is fucking weird, but whatever. So, we're gonna have to add a couple variables. And, okay, so we need to go over here in the AZ, it's called values. It has this after image variable, but we're not gonna, gonna be using it, so we're gonna be changing to something else. In fact, might as well just delete it. So I'm gonna go in new and add a whole bunch of them, because we're gonna be needing them. So, um,. We, here we can name variables, and I'm gonna name a couple of them. So first of all, I'm gonna name ground counter. This is the, the thing we're gonna be using for the grounded animation, which is gonna be a little thing like, let's say you jump, and then you fall, and when you fall, Sonic will go into the grounded animation and then go back into the regular animation. That's what's gonna happen in here. So, yeah, let's, let's do this now. Okay, ground counter. And we can change it to something, but we're not gonna do anything else. We might need something else though. Um, let me just add a general counter, just counter one, counter two, counter three, vowel one, vowel two, two, and vowel three. So this, this is just gonna be general variables I'm just gonna be using. Just so I can just do the several things. Uh, uh, sorry, Astro. Um, you're posting a lot of questions in the chat. I'm not really sure you're talking about several times. Try not to <laughs> ask stuff like that. Anyways, I'm not gonna have a dash counter. And by the way, you're gonna be using counters a lot in this game. And what is a counter? Well, it's just a variable that counts up or counts down. It depends. So that's it for now. And we're gonna save. Pressing Ctrl S saves it. So we're gonna go into. Hmm, where exactly? So we're going to go into player animation. 
And I'm gonna do something a little bit weird. Never really done that before, but this is good enough. We're gonna go into change animation. And we're gonna create a new group. X specials. Basically, we're gonna do a little thing. I guess that ground needs to be equal to one, yeah. Don't know what, I don't know what action 25 is exactly, let me check. So, if we're going to player control and we go into actions uh, and manage actions, every action group is labeled something and you need to do that when you make your own action group. But it's pull up. Pull up? What is pull up? Oh, it's a knuckles action. Okay, you're not gonna be using that. So, okay, so yeah, instead of zero, we're gonna be using animation 0 0.5. What does it mean? Nothing. <laughs> but we're gonna be using it anyways. And in this case, if animation is equal to 0 0.5, character is gonna be uh, grounded. I'm gonna be deleting this, doesn't matter. Ledge animation equals no. So, this animation is gonna play if ground is equal to one. And the player is on the ground. That's when it plays. Uh, uh, ground is equal to animation equal to 0 0.5. So in the player group, now we're gonna get into actions. In actions, we're gonna go into common actions. And in common actions, we got most of the actions that most characters share around, like spin dash, for example, rolling. All those actions are shared by characters. Sonic's actions are like super peel out. That's the actual Sonic dude. Tails actions is what Tails do, but whatever is in here, whatever is in whatever group, it doesn't really matter. You can put Sonic actions inside of Tails' group and it doesn't matter. What makes an action work or not is inside of manage actions, which is just a whole bunch of stuff. And I'm going to teach you why we want to start doing our own a little action group. Okay, so let's go into common. And in common, it sets a lot of animations, depending on ground speed and whatnot. So we're gonna do a little thing, a special thing. It's gonna be a regular group. And we're just gonna put everything over there. And then we're gonna copy this group. Well, of course, sometimes it just doesn't work, so we have to go outside of, all, of everything. I don't know why this happens. That's always happened. And I'm gonna call this the E Sonic X. Okay, so here's what you're gonna do. Here's what we're doing. When a group is deactivated, in this sense, all action groups are de de deactivated by the start uh, at the start, but they are activated by manage actions when the action variable is equal to a certain uh, a certain thing. For example, is equal to zero, activates that. There's also flag allow direction, which is I think allow character to move around or something like that, like change direction. There's also another one which is uh, allow movement or something like that. It's allow, oh, it's allow player input, I think. I'm not really sure, but I suddenly just check this group there to see if there's anything else. I don't think there is, but right. So here's what we're going to do. Set up this group. We're going we're gonna to insert a new line and it's going to be Compare to global value, game character is equal to six. Uh, can I negate? No. It's physical. If equal to six, group of events activate. This isn't exactly the best way of doing this, by the way. I'm just doing it for the sake of teaching you. If it's equal to six, activate Sonic EX. And if not, well, let me turn on my. Air conditioner. It's turned on. Nice. So, and we deactivate regular. See what I did there? I went here, here, group of events, activate or deactivate, and then you, you have a list of your groups, and then you can deactivate and deactivate a group. So basically, in this sense, I will deactivate regular. 
and activate Sonic EX. So what happens here is that all the events in here are going to be deactivated. You can also deactivate a line in itself by just going over here and deactivating it. I don't recommend doing this. I recommend going to the group, edit, and then activating it, activating or deactivating it. But you can uh, do that with a line just fine. Anyways, if char now if character is different than 6, there's a different button. We're gonna just activate regular and activate Sonic EX. I think we're gonna have to repeat this process for another action, but... Or maybe not, I don't think we're gonna be able to... We're gonna have to do that, but still, it's fine. Anyways, I'm going to insert a comment over here, just to add a little bit of space, a little bit of padding on top. Now I'm gonna insert a new line. It's gonna be an always. And this always is going to be adding a value to... You see the skin object? Well, the skin is inactive, so it can hold variables. That means we can check its variables. Essentially, the skin is the exact same object as player movement values. They're the exact same. It's what you program into them that changes things. Here, we're going to we're gonna go into a variable values, add to. We can add a variable to, but we're going to add because adding is it's for babies. Actually, you're adding a lot, but we don't need it for now because we're going to set ground counter to. I'm going to go over here, value A to Z, ground counter. Same thing. I'm setting the, the variable to itself plus one. And if we do this every frame, we're essentially adding one every frame. So what's going to happen over here is that insert. Uh, let me learn this one because this song is actually kind of loud. Uh, we're going to go check. It's not the best way of doing this again, but greater than 10. So it's only going to be setting to those animations if the ground counter is 10. It's greater than 10. If it's not greater than 10 and ground is equal to 1, it doesn't have to be equal to 1. It's kind of redundant actually. Uh, we need to set to lower or equal so there's no gap between the numbers. Set animation to 0. 25. Right. And we're just gonna add some padding again, you know, some uh, uh, empty comments in them. Just so we know what where is what here is the events for after it's good greater than 10 and here's the events prior to equal to 10. And also the thing that I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna go over here, uh, see what I did a replace, click replace. I'll say go values, compare it to it. Ground, I'm gonna check ground is equal to 1. If ground is equal to 1, my character is on the ground. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go over here, the special, and again, uh, right click, insert. Uh, limit conditions, only one action while event loops. This will make sure this only plays once. So we're gonna go over here, replace, the value, set, ground counter. To zero and also we might want to is that ground kind of do something else at the start like only one action or event loops it's a good idea no we might you might need to add something else later okay so we're gonna set ground kind of to one and we're gonna be creating some objects so we're gonna create an object not by name create an object uh, there's the, there's the smoke effect. Effects dust one. Uh, we're gonna be adding it to the sides of our character. We're positioning this right over here. And I think we can set the direction of that thing. I'm not gonna be doing that, at least not right now. And over here, we just wanna set it to the other side. If the center of your object is the center, the hotspot of your object is the center, then we can just go into X and change the the minus sign to a positive which is deleting it and it's automatically on the other side and we're gonna make a sound play right which sound should play well let's make a sound effect shall we all right so we're gonna go on google just real quick and you're gonna you're gonna type, type this lab chirp see the way it's, it's written lab chirp 
Right. You're gonna click on it. And you're gonna download it. You go whatever it is and you've downloaded it. Whatever version it is. In this software, we're gonna be making some sound effects. And I'm gonna teach you the basics of it. This is gonna be rather interesting and I'm probably gonna have to disable music for this one. Just so we can hear it. Okay, so here we go. Uh, this is Laptrip, and I already have it installed. I use it a lot. It's great for making 8-bit uh, sounding sound effects. Uh, aside from that, it's hard to, but I made most of Spark sound effects on the software. And, okay, so here we got Laptrip. It has channels, it has several things. I've explained everything, at least most of it. Okay, so here in channel, we can also generate a whole bunch of, sh whole bunch of shit, but whatever. Okay, so here in channel, we get... Essentially, it's a whole bunch of audio tracks. So far, you're only using channel one. We can use channel two, but we're going to be using channel two. You're going to be using only channel one for this one. And there's also a whole bunch of things over here you can export and whatnot. And over here, there's a delay. You can add a little delay before your audio tr tr track starts. And here's the length. You can change the length over here with this number, but I don't recommend you do that. Instead, there's like one S over here. It's one second. You can change it to something else. This case is going to be a very short sound, so I'm going to change it to 0 0.5, 0 0.5 seconds. So I'm going to, let's let's click play and see what happens. This is a sine wave. Let's slow down the sine wave so you see how it actually looks like. This is a very low pitch sine wave. This is an even lower pitch sine wave. Did you hear it? It's very weird, but this is what a sine wave is. And there's several other forms of waves. There's a triangle wave. There is... Let me also increase the volume a little bit so you can hear it. There is sow up. That hurt a little bit, but... Sow down, don't need to introduce it. There is a square wave. And there is noise one and noise two. Noise one is more like... Atari noise. Don't use it. Use noise two. Which is just a better noise. There's also custom. And if you click on custom, nothing happens. But there's a custom thing over here. And if you click on it, this thing changes to custom wave main. And over here, we can change several things. We can essentially make our own wave. So when you see it, check it out. Okay, so let's make a little, little, just a little triangle over here. It's... Oh God, come on. It only points upwards, so when our wave happens, that's our wave. Fucking weird, right? And you can't a little dent on it. Now we see the dent. Most waves are like this, essentially. This is like a triangle wave. Well, let's add a little dent on it, see what happens. And th this is how you make sound effects in here. But for the most part, let's not do that. Let's use noise. But now let's use a sine wave and let me teach you a thing. So here's the sine wave, let me increase the pitch. Now you can hear the sine wave, right? Okay, so we got several other things over here. Here we got in the main wave, we got frequency and volume. That's fine. But now we got frequency modulation and volume modulation. What is modulation? Well, it's easier to tell you what, to show you what it is. So basically, here you also have a sine wave and a sine wave. And you're gonna be using a sine wave to modulate the volume or frequency of the song. Frequency is the pitch, is how high it is. Like, ah, mm. you know, you know what I mean, right? And in volume modulation, we're gonna go over here, increase it a little bit, and then increase the amplitude to the max, just so you see what it is. Just notice that what it does is that it, it basically multiplies the wave by a sine wave. So. Here, it's multiplying the volume of the sine wave. However, we can do the same with the frequency of the sine wave. With the pitch, basically. So... Got an interesting sound effect. But, you might be able to hear something that's not very pleasant. When you play this, you might hear a... Sound at the end. See if you can grasp it. You hear it? Right at the end? Well, that's because there's a little problem. You see? If we click here on volume, this thing becomes the envelope volume. What you need to do is that at the end of this envelope, you need the volume to be zero. Now you don't hear it anymore. 
but you have to do this at the start. This is called the zero crossing problem, and it's when your wave itself, <laughs> your, uh, I'm sorry, but it, you have to hear those noises in your to understand what this is, I would say, but like, that, this is probably bad for known headphone users as well. It's just how it is. Uh, okay, so basically when your wave ends, it needs to end in zero. It needs to end in nothing. If it doesn't end in nothing, well, it's gonna it's gonna give that little t So make sure your little thing always has a little ramp to it. Right? Like this. Right. So let's make a little sound effect where a character lands on the ground. Is this too loud for you guys? Oh, is this too bad? It's just as loud as my voice, actually. I'm looking at OBS. Well, there's not much I can do. Okay, we're not gonna be using sine waves anymore. We're gonna be using noises, so it's not gonna be too bad noise a lot better all right so what we what do we do basically we're going to volume and by the way you can change in envelopes for everything so in frequency for example we can just do this or this it's pretty fucking cool i really like using this shit. it's fun a little tip though in quality settings set it to 16-bit at this amount of kilohertz, you don't really need this one, I, don't, I would say. Let me see what happens. <laughs> Not much changes. Yeah, so... Alright, so we got that. And now in volume, you get a little bit of the start. And it can, you should phase out real quick. Since it's dropping both feet at different time, we might as well do something like this. All right, you can also change the length of the of the song, which uh, the the audio, which doesn't actually change the vol the envelope, so it just becomes faster. So we need something like that. You can also do a frequency modulation, just to make it a little bit weirder. Just add some noise on top of noise. So, in the, let me, should I make this a lot faster? Am I still changing frequency? Alright. It needs to be a soft sound effect. Can't be too loud. Okay, so... After we're done, we can several other we can use other channels and we can we can mutate the sound. For example, like just change it. But we can also randomize. There's a randomizer where you can make several sounds. There's already several presets that make several amazing sounds for you. I like making my own, but some some sounds in Spark have actually been generated like this and they sound pretty pretty freaking interesting. So Okay, so to save, we can save it as something else, which is just this is like ground, ground hip. But this isn't actually saving the song, it's saving a lab chirp file. It's an itch file. So to, for you to actually export the sound effect. Oh yeah, you can add existing sound effects. Yes, I'm, just, is this, I'm just teaching people how to make your own because I see a lot of sound effects that just get same sound effects done over and over so sometimes it might be better if you guys just kind of make your own it's good you learn stuff you get good at audio i hope this is good enough to give you a little bit of a basis of what this thing is so i'm just gonna put this in the same folder as that one it's the reference folder sounds worlds and ground hit also, we're gonna be doing footsteps, so I might as well just make make it over here. It needs to be a much shorter sound effect, so can't be like that. 
can't be like a bitch like that. It needs to be a lot more easy. What what makes it go like pss, like that is this sudden spike in volume. So if you lower that a little bit, it's not like that anymore. I change the volume. Frequency, volume. Mm. Uh, if, if you move this lighter real quick over here, it kind of just moves the noise forward, I think. So we get a slightly different noise every time. Alright, let's export. Footstep one. We might need to make a different one, so let me just. Is this, did I export it? Yes. Now let me save as. Footstep. Ah, typed it wrong, but whatever. Alright, so we can we can close that. We go back into it. And we're gonna go over here, insert, and then we're gonna play a sample. So sample and just play sample. And now we need to, it, you, we can use all the samples we've already added to our game. There's several over here. There's boost. Wait, this isn't boost. Well, this is the boost sound over here. So it's a net snap. But we can just go from over here from a file, click browse, and then sounds worlds. Ground hit. And now it's added to our library. So it's always there. You don't need to find it again. It's over here. Also, by the way, when clicking display button, be fucking careful. I'm serious. This is really weird. Just be careful because sometimes it will crash. So, yeah. It's fucking odd, isn't it? Alright, okay, so here's the thing. At the start of the frame, uh... Hmm, why well, we don't actually need to do that? Instead, we're gonna do something interesting. We're gonna set ground counter to minus 10. We're gonna change this to zero. No, we're gonna set this to minus one. No, 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 this isn't right. It's gonna be lower than zero. And you're gonna make this greater or equal to zero. Uh -huh. This solves a little problem that we're gonna have earlier, later anyways. And we're gonna save. Oh, let's test it out and see what happens. I need to change your character to six. Check it out. Our character does a little landing when he lands on the ground. And also every time he gets into the ground in animation for some reason. Shouldn't do that, technically. So, oh, I think I know why it's happening. It's because of this event over here. This event over here shouldn't be inside of this action. Because the thing is, the action is being activated, and then only one action when event loops. Well, the loop, the event wasn't looping because we were outside of it. So, I'm just going to get this thing, get out of it, and we're going to go out of the action group, and then out of everything, out of objects management, and after interface and post-processing methods, we're going to go insert, group of events, and special actions and inside of our special actions we're gonna add character 06 it's, it's character 06 huh <laughs> sonic ex and inside of this we're gonna be pretty much adding everything this to our character and to make things a little bit more colorful and organized we can just add a color to it uh just make uh just make a color No, it's gotta be like darker blue. I'm a fag when it comes to this shit. That's good enough, whatever. Right, so over here, we did that. So, yeah. <laughs> and what's gonna happen? 
Oh, it's happening in other actions as well, too. So every time you land, there's this little animation. Of us landing. Problem is, it doesn't actually happen when you land on slopes. It doesn't really change the angle. Because it's not set to change the angle. So as you can see, if you pause the game, Sonic is still in it. And oh, there's also the red line on it. Let me change that real quick. Right, there's also one thing that I like to do before we do that, and that is we should add a manager to this group. A special manager. And here in special actions, we need to just essentially do this always. Group of events, deactivate, Sonic X. So every time this event is triggered, which is every time, every frame, it's going to deactivate Sonic EX. But, however, if bubble value name character is equal to 6, we're going to go group of events, activate Sonic EX. So, essentially, we deactivated Sonic EX, but then we checked if character is equal to 6. If it is, then we reactivate the group. So, it just becomes active. I'm just going to deactivate by default just because this will avoid certain issues. For example, last time when we started the frame, we just heard the ground sound. We just heard it and we weren't that character. That's not good. So let, we changed it and now that shouldn't be happening. Right. But now let's make the character, uh, the character's skin actually rotate and we need to go into animation speed, animation speed, change angle. And I do believe... Hmm. So, this is interesting. It doesn't exactly work the same. Hey, boy. I'm gonna have to use this. I hate using this thing. It's so bad. Even when I use it for looking at this thing, it still fucks things up a little bit. I'm gonna... Go over here into where the player skins are and actions. Oh boy. Mm. So, what makes the characters rotate in Delta? <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll figure this out. So, basically, it says rotate skins. I might have to copy this. So, in change animation, Sonic X specials. Might have to go in here, insert. Uh, what is happening? Group events. No, no, no. It's fast loops. Start loop. Rotate skins. Number of loops, one. So, okay, so we're starting. That, that's the thing about fast loops. It's uh, We're essentially just calling a thing called rotate.skins. And we're calling it once. We can call it multiple times, but we're calling it once when we are with that thing. So let's see if it works. Oh, I saw it disappeared for a while. Interesting. Why? I wonder why it's happening. Yeah, it's still not rotating. Fucking weird. Hmm. Ah, so many events. Okay, I'm going to check this. Hmm. Hmm. So... Okay, if you feel like a dumbass, just put music back. Oh, I think it has a couple things over here, huh? Yeah, that's the thing. It's this fucking thing. That's what sets it. Yeah, this should be it. Okay, but there was a problem before that I didn't notice. 
go over here, ground it. If there's a red line, this bright, it's just gonna copy this one and paste it. <laughs> Too many events. Well, that's Cook Team Fusion in a nutshell. That's why Spark runs low sometimes. There we go. Thing is, it does actually slide. The character actually slides a little bit when he's running fast and rounds. That's that's an effect. Of, that's a side effect of it, unless you want to add an animation where the character is, is grounded and running. But thing is, it doesn't look too bad because I've seen it in uh, working on other games. It actually looks pretty okay. And in fact, we can just make it shorter. So. Alright, so let's polish up it up a little bit. Let's take this one out. Or not. Let's take this one out instead. And over here, it's gonna go back. Special actions, character EX, set calendar. To five, so it's only gonna be there for five frames. That's a lot better usually. It's a lot faster now. You can barely see it actually. Also because of the smoke effect. Let me let me make it a little bit bigger. Seven. Now we can see it and it doesn't look too bad. Check it out, it's pushing! <laughs> Check this shit out. Yeah, it's a little bit funny, but... It works! We have a little classic Sonic EX here. Alright, now let's add some footsteps. Just a little dumbass effect but should work. So we're gonna call this group Footsteps. Here's the thing, we're gonna be using animation frames here to make this effect work. So basically we're gonna go over here and I'm gonna use the snipping tool like always. You just type snip and it should show up. And then you go over here and then you capture it. There, I'm gonna move this to my second screen so I know what I'm doing, but essentially now I know which frames Sonic touches the ground with his feet, so I can do things on. Alright, so let's go in it. And let's go into... Let's set... God. No. This... I'll use... Ground equal to 1. Insert and this we can either compare it to an animation or we can use values. In this case, I'm gonna compare it directly to the animation of the character because I want it to be specifically that animation independent of whatever else I'm using. So, got it, made a mistake. Uh, hello, guys in the chat. Welcome to my shit tutorial. Uh, animation, which animation display? In this case, it's gonna be walking. And I'm gonna uh, be adding a little comment in here. Walking. Just walking here. Just walking here. And animation. Okay, so we gotta compare it to something here. We can compare it here if we go in animation. Compare current frame of player Sonic X to a value. Okay, so what are those values? Well, it's right over there in my side screen. I can see all of them. And we're gonna. So I can't do that. <laughs> so I'm gonna put it in my second thing and let's see. So Sonic touches the ground in frame one. So there we go. Frame frame is equal to one. So we're gonna create a little smoky there. Where's the smoke? Here, right over here, right in the middle. But the smoke can be kind of big and can hide the character a little bit. So one of the things that I can do 
Let's go... I can go into any object here. And here's the thing. If I don't know where the smoke is, I know the smoke is over here. But I'll go to Eggman Monitor. Set Scale. I can just set, set X and Y scale. Then just go Set Scale. I'm gonna type R, R Random and 0 0.3 to 0 0.5. Our random is random range, so it basically sets a a range of random numbers, and you have to put them in this format. Essentially, the uh, number A and that, and number B, and close them in brackets. It has the point in here because 0 0.3 and 0 0.5. Not sure exactly if the random range is gonna work, work it floats that way, but let's see. So it set it, and quality keep it zero. Right, okay, so it, I set it to the um, Eggman monitor. Shouldn't be the Eggman monitor. It should be the smoke. Just drag it. By the way, dragging doesn't exactly work with every object. For example, it doesn't work in here. If I drag other objects into it, it just doesn't work. So, yeah. Oh, God. Anyways, it doesn't work to, with every event, but it works in most of them. Oh, okay, Astro. Man, by the way, change that name, dude. <laughs> oh, Jesus, I got a little light headache. This ain't fun. Okay, so... Right, so it's gonna do this in current frame is equal to 1. But, we're gonna be using fast loops to make this thing easier on us. So here's what we're gonna do. Uh, I'm gonna go over here, on loop foot step make sure you get everything right by the way like foot step has to be in this way like you have to write it in the same way like if you write an uppercase letter you have to write it in the same way you actually do it Ugh. all right so here's what you do you can go over here over here fast loops start loop and just it's gonna have an empty loop because I can just go over here copy and paste. Make sure it has this quotation marks. Just make sure it has it. Number of loops, one. Make sure it's one. So this is gonna make sure that it, we don't have to call this event every time. Like you need, you need to have several copies of it. We can just have one event that we call every time that we have a, we need a footstep, pretty much. Also, we need to play, play sample. Mm, if browse from a file, footstep one. And one thing that we can do is that we can go and we can go into samples and set sample volume. This is going to set the individual volume of a specific sample, right? And that is a sample means a uh, any audio. And I'm going to set the sample to footstep and minimum zero, maximum 100. So I'm going to set this to our random to 60 to 100 or yeah 100 that'll do right now we create the thing and then we reorder the events uh can i can i create po powers or events that react on scenario for example my shard can my shard throw a fireball and the forward scenario start to burn yeah you can do that you just need to code the forward scenario to start burning or changed its animation to a burning animation when hit by a fireball. Yeah, you can do it. All those things. It's just like enemy interaction, really. Right, so... In walking, we need to do this for all the other frames as well. So, we got frame 1, it touches the ground, and then frame 5. Now we need to do the same for... Running. And I'm using, using the snipping tool again. It's off screen, so... It's right over here now. I moved it. I just need to know what it is. I'm just organizing my UI. By the way, your guys' UI is probably going to be different than mine because I just like to have mine organized in this way. It's just my little thing. All right. Oh, by the way, uh, people on the Discord, if you can talk on the YouTube, um, my second monitor is like super busy right now, so I can't really figure everything out from over there. Just looking to both chats. 
running. We can set uh, this and then again to running. Uh, so which frame does it touch the ground? It's just the ground in frame one. For example, here, frame one and then frame four. And it touches again on frame eight. So it might as well just have one since for both frames just touching the ground. So there you go, frame four and frame eight. There we go. This could be annoying too. For a lot of people, they don't like this kind of stuff, but still. Uh, it's okay, Astro. Uh, I'm not very into fan, fan characters, but still. And so you can see you're playing as regular Caustic Sonic. Nothing really happens because all the events we set are set to, you know, our EX Caustic Sonic. But now we can see that. that there is stuff. For some reason, the smoke effect isn't showing up. I wonder why. Okay, let me delete this, see what happens. Might be the scale thing. It is the scale. And I forgot to do a little thing. Let's just. Let's, uh, random range doesn't work with floats. Basically, 0 0.5 and whatnot, so. Let's just not do that. Let's add a one only one action relevant loops real quick. So right, let's go. Okay, so it doesn't look all that amazing. So far anyways. Let me change it. Let me let me make it a little bit more fancy. So fifty and thirty. 30. I think the variance doesn't need to be too high or else it's gonna be too noticeable that it's like just a random thing. So we can, we can create a new one, a new footstep and just make this footstep heavy. And then we change it to 8. And instead of the random thing like this, we change it to 50 and like 60. So we play footstep heavy when Sonic's going fast. Alright, so let's go, let's just test the shit out. Alright. I can barely hear that sometimes. Yeah, there we go. Hmm. It doesn't always work, there's a little bit of an issue. I think the sound might be a little bit too muted. I don't know exactly what's happening. So I'm gonna be setting it to... Just let me... You know what? Fuck random range. Ugh. Sometimes, like... As the thing about clicked Fusion, sometimes certain things just don't like to cooperate all that much. We're gonna have to deal with that. It's just weird. Alright. Go for it. It's weird, it feels like Sonic should be having more footsteps. Oh, it's because it's set to 4 and 4. I'm an idiot. Yeah, you can barely hear the footstep sound effects, but... They're there. Alright. Hmm. Testing it around is a very good idea. Always test your shit around. Yeah, it actually doesn't feel entirely right for some reason. So, one thing that we can do is 
say something else. Add a falling animation. Oh, I can do that. Let's do that. It's my flashiness. So falling. Oh, I may have to rename that. Fall off. So it's relatively easy to do. So we can do it. Right, let's go into our sheet. Let's check out some of the potential candidates for Folly animation. There's the classic Sonic CD one. Let's see if you've got anything else. I don't think you do, really. Let's go with that one then. All right. You guys remember this one, right? People like this one a lot. I have, I have a feeling anyways. So, let's copy this. And, you know, basic stuff. Just, I just hate adding animations. It's, ah, oh, I'm done with this. So glad I'm able to move on from quick thing. All right, this should be good enough. Right. Cool. Someone might appreciate this. Let me save how long I've been here. I've been here for an hour already? God. <laughs> At least we did something. So, right, let's go ahead and add that. So we're going player, player animation, change animation, Sonic X specials. And we're gonna change it, change it to the 0 0.6. Just be any number, really. It's the falling off animation. And then we're gonna go into door control, actions, Sonic actions. Peel out. No, not super peel out. Common. Sonic X. Alright, so every single one of those animations you see it says grounded is equal to one. Alright, however, if we just tell it this, just tell everything everything else to fuck off, you can set it to 0 0.6. Now we can make Sonic fall. Wait, it's not falling. Come on, man. Don't do this to me. Come on. Oh, ground counter. Why is it? Why is it not doing that? Hmm. We got Kai the conundrum in here. Why animation different than 45? I need to check if, if it's still in this action. If ground is equal to zero. Okay, so one thing that we can do is that we can go in here and active objects. And then we can get player movement values. And over here we can go in our table values and we can see all of it. Oh, don't mind if Sonic World slows down while you're doing this, by the way, because it does slow down, unfortunately. The, the, the debugger is actually incredibly heavy for some reason. Here we can check grounded variable, we can check several variables like action, action is equal to zero, but here it's equal to one. We can check several things. Okay, so when if we fall, grounded is still zero, uh, grounded is zero, but action is still zero, and the animation is not set to... It, I'm not really sure if it was set to that, but yeah, so animation should be set to 0 0.6. Hmm, all right, we, can, we need to check out some other things as well. So, if we go in here and we add player others, we can go and check the animation variable. Mm, animation, it's right down there. 
Alright, and you can see that it's animation 3 now. Animation was set to 0 0.5 just a while back. And it's been set to 0 0.6, but nothing is happening. I don't know why. Hmm. Okay, so let me try a different approach. Instead of 0 0.6, I'm gonna call this animation uh, 66. And then just go over here and call it 66. It might be a problem with floating point inaccuracies or just with the infusion being a piece of shit, which is most likely the case. But yeah. Oh, so it doesn't work, huh? Very odd. Okay. Is this a conundrum? Maybe it's just being set to the wrong animation somehow. It's being set to falling out. Oh, you did that it! What? <laughs> of course, everything was right except for my own dumbass mistake. There we go. Check that out. Hope you like it. Does it look fancy enough? Check it out now. Now he falls. Wee! Oh shit, that's a high as fuck landing conversion factor. There we go, see that falling? Like that? Yeah. Now he falls. Now a little baby can fall. It's fancy, isn't it? Cool, huh? Okay, so I'm gonna polish the... the footstep thing just real quick. So, footsteps, it's been called... Running four and eight. Reason why might be because it's being called it's been called three and then seven maybe. Yeah, maybe this is why. It's because let me actually try this show. Yeah. Okay, so what's happening what's happening here is that okay, so you see this it's not actually frame four that's being called. See that says three before? But that's because frame 1 is actually frame 0, and this is frame 1, and this is 2, and this is 3. This is, a, this is a little interesting thing. Keep that in mind when making your little animations. This could be a problem. So, for example, over here, let's have this the 4. Let me check this. Alright, let me actually check out the sound. Sounds sound when Sonic runs fast. Again, as I said before, this this will be made public for people to use for whatever game they wanna make. Ooh, boss fight. Hey. Oh well, anyways. So, what to do next? I can do the backflip or the dash. Uh, okay, so I'm just gonna wait for a while and take some suggestions. Uh, um, if, if you guys have any suggestions what I should do next, you want me to do the dash? Let me just, anyways, while you guys talk about it, I'll just prepare for the dash. So we got this animation over here and I can just use it for the dash. And I'm just gonna be using it, really. So 
boost? Well, there's already a boost in it. I'm not gonna be adding a boost. You can add a boost on your own. It's already in there, in fact. Uh, so, okay. Okay, so here's a little tip. Uh, if you have a brush and you want to paint your image, but you you want to retain the the darker colors or blacks, basically, you can set it set an opacity to it and just paint it. Oh, I guess it's not working. Huh? Guess it ain't working. Oh, well, whatever. So all right, so just gonna set this to white. Yeah. It's green for some reason. So what I want to do here is that I basically kind of just want to to add a little effect, a little glow when Sonic starts dashing. There, let me check how it looks on loop. Check it out. I'm gonna make him shake a little bit. Could shake a little bit more. And yeah, you can you can manipulate hotspots in order to make your character do things. So yeah, not look. Let me change the speed to something more like 70. Not 79, 70. All right. Time to do a dash, guys. Right. So, here's how this is going to work. We probably need to add a new group for the dash action, and we're going to be doing just that. In fact, it's going to work very similarly to how it works in Spark. And okay, so first of all, we're going to go into player. We're going to just program the action, and then we're going to program a way to do the 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 action itself. So, yeah, things like homing attack, wall jumping, and you know, whatnot, it's already in the engine. Shadow can already do those things. So with your, with your knowledge of the engine, you can make those events trigger with regular Sonic as well. So, let me randomize the playlist. I don't know, some, some Rouge the Bat music, it's good, Adventure 2. Anyways, alright, so we're gonna be making our first action, guys. Alright, so, I'm just, just gonna be making this in other actions, there's a lot of it, Sonic's actions. I'm just gonna be making it over here, doesn't really matter where. You wanna create a group, a group of events, and you have to name it right. All action events are named the right way, so make sure you just get everything named right. But the names don't really matter, it's just for organization. But it's good that you do it. So let's just do it. Uh, action. Actions. And we, we need a number for it. Number could be anything. I'm gonna name it action 128. Oh, that's too obvious. So 121. Here we go. Give me any number, really. So. Uh, spark. Spark dash. It's not gonna work exactly the same way as Spark. I wanna make it more like Farks dash than than Sparks Dash, but it's gonna be more like, it's gonna be a very simple dash, it's not gonna, it's not gonna be exactly like Sparks Dash, it's gonna be much more simple than that, but yeah. So, instead of this group, we're gonna deactivate it, you right click it, edit, and then deactivate it. Right, so before we go into it and do anything, we go, go over here, and we're gonna go into deactivate group, just Ctrl C, Ctrl V, any of them, copy and paste, and then you go to your thing is spark dash and deactivate it. It's gonna be deactivated over here. Now what we do, we go over here, we copy and paste it. You don't exactly need to name an event in here because it already says everything down here. But basically, you're gonna type action equal to 121. It's right up here. It says, and it's gonna if the action is equal to 121, it's gonna activate spark dash. It's very similar to what we did down there actually. So. And here we have Spark Dash. Uh, so what's gonna happen in here? Okay, so we're gonna have an Allies, and this thing is going to activate. Uh, activate. No, we're gonna add one organism. Add this time. 
because this is what add does. It's just uh, it's the variable plus itself plus one. That's what add does. But it's gonna be plus whatever we want, and we're gonna have dash counter put a one. So add uh, add one to dash counter basically. So let's add a comment, an empty comment, so it organized, and you're gonna put this level values if dash counter is lower than uh, how many frames should be dashed by should be dashing you know, to 10 frames and your dash speed let me set this m other values x speed uh, we, need, we need to compare x speed in the same way that we did before so we're gonna have to with abs so we're gonna have to compare two general values in the, over there and then we're gonna have to go over here values X speed, abs, and it doesn't need to be capitalized, but lower than whatever the dash speed is, which I think we should make dash speed around the around the top speed, which is around 8.5, so we should make it a nine, I think. So lower equal to nine, maybe a little bit too fast though. So let's make it a six. So if that if the speed is less than, lesser than 6, and dash counter is smaller than 10. M, other value is set. Uh, where is the... Set X speed to 6 times values. And here's the thing though, if you do it times the direction, it will go in that direction because here's the thing when you're going backwards your speed is negative and the direction value is negative if we're going backwards and in a sense forwards mean going right uh, and positive if we're going to the right so if you times this value towards direction essentially a positive number times a negative number which will be minus one in this case will just turn six into minus six so it's gonna set the speed to this times direction. Direction is always one or minus one. So, yeah. This event is for when we are below the dashing speed. However, if, if we're greater than the dashing speed, it's greater than six, it has to be greater, that's greater or equal, this is greater. It's just gonna set the x speed to, to nothing. <laughs> there, there is no need. However, what there is a need to is to set the animation. And the animation is to be set to animation. It's to be set to this. It usually is the same value as the action itself. So 121. And another thing that we may have to do is action equal to dash counter equal to 1. Uh, at the start, only one action and event loops. And we play a sample. It should be the dash sample. We might have something. Could have used Amy's hammer sound. Should be good enough, right? Or not. Hmm. Probably need to, we need to have something. Snap. Whoa. I could have anything. That could do it, but maybe not. So I might as well make our own then. No, not Blender. Okay, so. Noise 2. Alright. Making sound effects is just surprisingly easy once you get the gist of it. I want some modulation. There we go. This, this. Oh, 
Dang. That's... Been here for how much? Almost an hour and a half, huh? Alright, I'm gonna play Sound Dash. Let's say, let me save. And... Okay! Is this it, though? No, not at all. In fact, there's a couple things we gotta do. First of all, we probably need to create a... Low, low dust around the, play the player. Let's create a 10. And at minus 10. Just so we have something. And uh, not only that, but here's the thing. Here's a very important thing. You see, in several actions, you can... Uh, you need an exit out of that action. And usually that exit has to be done manually or else you're gonna get stuck in that action for mostly forever. So here's the thing, I'm gonna put a comment say that this is the end of it. So if dash counter is greater or equal to 10, let's just make the yeah, greater or equal, I should do it. It's gonna set and let's go by the set. Action to zero. It could be anything really. Uh, but that does mean that if you dash and while your stuff you wasn't you, you weren't spinning then you're not gonna be spinning so what we're gonna do here let me delete that we're gonna be checking if attacking was equal to one uh in worlds every time you jump and your character is spinning attacking is set to one so if attack is equal to one and we're already spinning well uh, in this case attacking is equal to zero just go back to action zero if your attacking was equal to 1, however, it should go back to some other action that keeps you spinning. In this case, it should probably be the rolling action or some other action. Right, let me actually check if in common actions rolling still stays, stays rolling, even if you're out of the ground. No, it's such a best of 1. Okay, so there's a couple of things you might want to do. Uh, and okay, so several actions have ways of going back to other actions. For example, this is the event for going back to the to jumping from rolling. Playing is on the ground anymore. Switch to jump, but you can't just switch to jump. You have to do it in a specific way. Oh, but I'm changing this. Let's look at this. So I'm changing that. Lang knows what this is. Uh, anyways, let's go back into Sonic Actions, Spark Dash. So, basically, I'm gonna put this, put this in here, and if attack is equal to 1, go to jumping. And if attacking is equal to 0, just go to action 0. That simple. Right, now we need to set animation 121. And we don't exactly need to set it in order, but we might as well set set it in Sonic EX specials. So 121, set animation sequence to dash. Right. Now we also need several other things. For example, what if you're in the ground and you press the opposite direction when you're dashing? Well, usually you want your characters to stop. So you need your characters to skid. So you have several events here related to skidding, which you're gonna just copy straight up from the regular group. You just get all those events and just go over there and paste it. I'm just gonna call this group Exit and just put the shit in here just so we know. Also, uh, to trigger a jump, usually things aren't as simple as they may seem, so let's just go with the flow and just make things simple. I think, I think this, is, this is probably the right jumping event. Since character is different than 3 and different than 4, that means character character is either Sonic or Tails or something like that. Or Knuckles. Because Knuckles, I think, is character number 2 and Tails is 1 and Sonic is 0. This must be the regular jumping event. So... I'm gonna go... And I'm gonna put, put this thing over here. This is for jump. Get a move of those. There we go. So now I think we have mostly a complete dash. 
uh, skill. Speed equal to 6 for dashing might be a little bit slow, but yeah. Uh, okay, so right now, too, I want to create a little smoke under Tonic every time he's dashing, just like that. Should be good enough, I think. Or not. Let us see what I can do. Okay, so it's gonna add dash counter and also add one to counter one, which is interesting. Because now we have two counters and we can use counter uh, one to something else. For example, here we're gonna go and set counter one to two. Counter one is greater than two or greater or equal to two. If greater or equal to two, then just create that's, that's a little piece of smoke over there. So it's not created every frame and you don't use this fucking thing. Every. This thing can break you. So try not to use it. I already said it several times why this thing's a bad idea, but just try not to use it. For certain types of games, it might actually be a good idea, but not this kind. Sonic games are usually well. This is the FPS anyway, so it's fine. I just turned off my AC for a while, that's why I heard a beep. Right. Now we need to trigger the, da the dash, uh, dash attack, or the dash itself. So how do you do that? Well, let's go into Sonic EX. Let's trigger it by pressing a button. Right. So oh, also we need to make a a little variable so we know the dash has been triggered. Dash flag. So basically, we just need to know if dash has been triggered so we don't dash in air infinitely. So here, we go into over here and we set... Uh, could just be anything really. We just do that. And then dash flag. And set it to 1. Uh, right, so it says dash flag to 1, and now we need to trigger it. Okay, so I just added this event over here, and it's gonna be, okay, so other values, check, if pressing whatever key we're gonna use, in this case I'm gonna try to use key, key D, let's go with key D, or C, C pressed. C pressed means it's pressed once. It's the half a press thing. Almost. Not really. It's like entering a key press, not holding it. So if you just press the button, when. Let me copy this so we can just go right ahead and. Action. Action is different than. What kind of actions can we really have the player not be into? Like dying, for example. I think dying is action 8. Yeah, so if player isn't dying, or hot dying or hurt. So if he's not dying, and uh, dash flag is equal to zero, basically the dash has not been triggered, and this this needs to be equal to one. Let me for this. Uh, M letter value set. Uh, let me check. Let's set action to 121, which is a dash action. And that should mostly get us uh, get us covered, except for a little bit of a fact. We also need to. Um, mm, how am I gonna do this? At the end of a dash. Okay, so at the end of a dash, greater than zero if. If we are one sec. ground equal to zero. Hmm. I don't need to really need to do this over here, I don't think. No, I can do this over there. So basically if ground and we're setting the dash flag over here. Ground is equal to one. I go for no one. Equal to 1, and action is different than 121. Also, we need to do this so it's we can't dash inside of a dash. 
and we need to set the dash flag itself, which you can just drag this thing over here, and then dash flag, and set it to what? To zero. And let's save. Right, so going back in there, dash flag is set to, to one, which means it's it's dashing, and it's not dashing anymore. It should do that. So. Let's test out a little dash. Let's see what, what we'll get out of it. Can we dash with regular classic Sonic? No. Can we dash with normal with, uh, with Sonic EX? Yes, you can. It doesn't always work. Why? Well, because we didn't reset our variables after the dash was over, and we need to do that. So I'm going to reset them over here. So we need to make a little group. Dash trigger. Let's save again, just because. Uh, so right, so we said if action isn't like that, set dash counter to zero. And set counter to zero. What does we really have to do that per se, but might as well. Over here too, I forgot, I made a mistake. It doesn't have to, to have this, but what it needs is this. I know I use that, but I don't need that. So just go over here, counter one, equal to zero. So it goes back to zero before that happens. Okay, but there's something else though. Here in Sonic, now that we know what counter one is being used for, we can change it to dash smoke, smoke counter. So we know what it does, right? Let me grab my controller actually because I may be able to use it. Right. Yeah, it works. So, here we go. Hmm. That's a little problem though. I have to fix. That's smoking, right? So, and the dash, I might want it to have it be for less time, like seven frames. Right. And over here, I think we would have set that those things would be set to zero after that. Let me see if there's anything else I need to set to zero. I don't think so, so let's go. Interesting. Interesting that it's it's L1 in my controller, it's not anything else. It's pretty pretty short dash, really. Oh look at that! It keeps your it keeps your air momentum. However, we can cancel out air momentum, but keep the up upwards flow momentum because that's that looks cool. So, this is what we're gonna do. At the start of the dash, if in this case, uh, could just you can just use this. It's fine. Y speed is greater than zero. Well, uh, for the dash duration, we set. So we well set. And here's the thing. Sometimes the gravity might be applying, even though you're setting the Y speed to zero, which is your falling speed. The gravity might still be applying, so it might be a wise idea to set your speed to 0 0.125 or something like that. So it's not zero. Let's do that. Alright. Alright. We have our dash, but we actually go faster if you if we run, so we can't really mash dash. But we can change direction super easy with the dash. Mm, there's a problem though. I don't know where, how how did it got it to trigger? I 
Okay. I have to set always. Because there's there sometimes this can be a problem. Sometimes you lose the control of your character. This thing, flag allow common input, set it to one. If it, if you set it to zero somehow, you might have some issues, so just set it to that. And Yeah, check it out. Yeah, also I'm gonna remove that little smoke that's created at the start. This doesn't look very good. Yeah, how do you guys feel about it? Oh yeah, another issue. <laughs> we gotta go back into the change animation angle and make sure it also changes the animation angle for this animation. Hmm. I wonder if we can do it over there. I wonder if we can just set it over here and it should work. Well, let's do it. Let's see if it works. Not sure if it will. But we need to set that, or else Dash is gonna look pretty weird. Hmm, surprisingly though, the attacking is not being set to one, so... No, it doesn't work at all. So... We're gonna have to s check for the action itself. One twenty one. Okay, so in the exit, that thing is not really working. So what we're we gonna do here, huh? Hmm. It doesn't exactly say attacking to zero when it dash, which is interesting. When they only change changes the attacking action. What if we just set attacking to one while I'm dashing? That could be interesting. There's probably some event down down the line that sets attacking to to zero when you're not rolling. So Oh look at that. Automatically makes Sonic a ball. That's good. I think I'm gonna leave it like that because it's good. It's, it's a way to recover your spin jump. Yeah, you can spam dash, but don't, you don't really exactly go faster for spamming. Huh. Interesting. If I activate the dash when I'm spinning, things work a little bit different. So, how, how are you guys liking it so far? How does, it, how does classic Sonic EX look? There's still more we can add, by the way. This is an interesting style of gameplay for Classic Sonic. I don't think I've seen it before. Oh, no, a speed meter. That's kind of dumb. Okay, uh, I'm gonna add a little custom double, double jump. Might not even need to do this. So, let me just add a double jump flag. Why not add punching? Well, I don't have a punching animation, but I do plan on adding something like punching. I wanna add some kicks, actually. I wanna add some, some melee attacks, but not in today's stream. Some other time, maybe. Okay, spreading this guy in the chat. Always weird. <laughs> so, alright, it's going to come on action, it's jump. Character specific events. Well, let's just add a group. EX Sonic EX events. 
And basically what we're gonna do is that table values if the bo jump flag is equal to zero and uh, oh where's the event that creates the insta shield? This hmm I could just copy this and add this. So this is the insta shield event. And <laughs> we're gonna use it. Just copy the insta shield thing. However, since it's a double jump, uh, it's a character for six. Um, actually, where is the insta shield? I have a better idea. Oh, it's disappearing, right? Yikes. I'm gonna be a madman. Cool. Let's make it 99. Let's make a mega kind of thing. I'm not sure if it's even gonna work, it's a bad idea. Let me stop. Okay, so I'm gonna do something interesting over here. So, here's the thing. You see, when you have something in the, the, the disappearing event, what happens is that... Oh, the music of the name right now, everyone asks. It's Afterburner, Climax, Mix, mix and Bayonetta. There. It's the Bayonetta Afterburner remix. Okay, so basically, what happens here is that... Uh, when you are in the disappearing animation, that's why I told you not to use it and end the appearing animation is because Disappearing is a special kind of animation which the object will be destroyed after use I don't recommend you ever do this because sometimes it will break and the object will not be destroyed It's bad. It's fucking bad. Don't use it <laughs> So basically what we're gonna do instead is that in the insta shield We're gonna add a behavior which is not something I recommend you do. Wait, it already has one Oh, okay. Okay, so it has a behavior for something else, but basically we're gonna go in here. It, let me add, just add this thing on my own, really. Okay, so in behaviors, usually it doesn't have a behavior, so you have to create a new one. The behavior is a way of add, adding events inside of objects. It's sort of useful, but I don't use it very often except for this one thing. Okay, so here's the thing. The way the, the editor works inside of behaviors, which people tell you not to use, is like the list editor. It's the check mark one, and I don't like it. But that's not why it's bad. It's it's a deprecated system that it's not very used anymore. But anyways, I'm gonna go in here. And as you see, you can not use many events. It's because it's weird. You need to import objects. I'm not sure why you were using behaviors for this one, by the way. It's kind of weird. Anyways, we're gonna go with always. And then over here, we're gonna double click it, insert action, over here, add one, two, whatever variable, let's go with, with Q, let's add one to Q, right, so it's adding one to Q, got it, always access it, okay, so now, we're gonna check, if Q, where's Q, Q is greater than uh, 60, which is, one second basically and I'll destroy it there so essentially this is how this is one way of making an object destroy itself after use is by doing that so now we can go in the insta shield in fact if I can find it oh by the way those objects that have behaviors have a little B attached to them at the bottom so we can see it over there animals have behaviors as you can see so uh, uh, animation, change animation sequence, 2x. Okay, so here's the thing. When you create an object like this, and right next to it, you add something related to that object, it will only affect the object that, that was already created. It will not affect any other object that has, that is that same object. It's 
It's quite weird, but it does do that. So, yeah, I think this is it. Or no, that's not it. This double jump flag needs to be set to zero, to one. And you need to set, um, what's the name of it? X speed <laughs> to whatever double jump speed that we want. In this case, I'm going to go with five. So X speed is going to be set to five. It's going to play the Insta Shield sound. And I wanted to play their sound as well. So, yeah. Now, uh, we can go in any event that says if ground is equal to one. Like this one, for example. Let me just create a new one to set without the only actual event loops. Double jump flag, zero. So, we haven't double jumped. Essentially. Basically, if you're on the ground, now that you can double jump again. Let me check. Victory equal to six, all those things. Sometimes you can just copy things because those other variables I added here for basically not making the game glitch. Essentially, this is like if I just added will and Neely, they'll be like, oh, if what what if I have a shield? You know, what if I have those things? And those events already in worlds already account for those things. So copy and paste those events is really not too bad. So let me see. Can Sonic double jump? Well that thing got fucked. That's why I hate disappearing. It's bad. Let me change. No disappearing. Fuck it. Let's make the last fame an empty. This would do. Right. I hope this, this won't break. Let me see, does it have fine detection? It does. Fine detection, it won't check collision with the whole box. Which is good. Let me save. Right, let me see if the insta shield works normally. Seems seems like it. Right, now if we change into our, our, our character. Oh, it's setting the X speed. Huh, it's kind of funny, actually. So, we need to set Y speed. It's kind of a no be mistake. Right? It does make me, make me not be able to jump after that. Which is bad, but still. Mm, I can't double jump anymore, that's because I have a shield. I can't use the shield because I'm not tagged as Sonic. There we go, I can double jump now. And I create a massive insta shield effect when I do it too. I'm not sure if I get actually invincibility when I do it. Let me check. No, I don't. So what do you guys think? If I got like something like a double jump and a uh, wall jump animation, maybe that's why I add shadows in it. I'm just not adding the boost. I just don't, don't feel like adding boost in 2D. I don't know. It worked well in Rush, but Rush is a different kind of type of game, you know? No, that's the point of the Classic Sonic X, just to add a shit ton of utility to Classic Sonic. I want to add, I want to add this event to, to some other things as well. Oh, by the way, let me check, take the shield out. Okay, so let me add this to rolling. Events, X events. Can I still stream on YouTube? Am I still doing it? Yeah. Been here for almost two hours. Damn. Jump variable, insta shield, fuck that. 
the ground is equal to zero. So I think you should be able to actually jump after a dash now. Apparently not. Hmm. Fucking weird. Odd, let me check. We can dash. Can we double jump? No. Hmm. Hmm. Don't see really anything wrong. Let me add this to to common actions. God, I hate this. I have to add it outside, of course. There's a inside of Sonic X. There is the X event. Yes. So basically, I think the point in here is that we can double jump. Yeah, after this. So. Might as well do something like this, since it's not the character wasn't rolling before. We set, we, we run, run the rolling sound. Set action to six. Before I do that, though, let me change one thing. You know, I'm gonna change the rolling. You Brazilian! Oh, me too! <laughs> Alright. Seems to work. Doesn't work with that, though. I just want to be able to make you that. I just want to be able to make you dash after a... J double jump after a dash. What action does dash statue? I forgot about it. This is complicated. We gotta check this shit here to make it work right and feel good to play. That's what you something you need to do. So I add set to zero if attacking is equal to one. Attacking is always equal to one though. No. Also just jump. Hmm, so I have an interesting idea. This is gonna add something to it. Set. Double jump side to zero. Okay. Oh. The jump, does jump area need to be zero? Does it really? This doesn't fuck it up. No. Oh, that's why. So... Haha! <laughs> Here's a little trick. Okay, so... You can jump, dash, and then jump. But you can double jump, dash, and then do another jump. There's a little strat for you. That's programmed in, by the way. Oh, nice! Fucking f utility field classic Sonic. Right. You can also do it out of a spring. No, we can. We can do it. We can do a dash out of a spring and then do it. Oh, check this shit out. We can we can double jump and dash and then double jump. Hell yeah, guys! Mm. 
just testing things out. You gotta test it out, see if it works. <laughs> can I store can I store the charge? So. Nah, it doesn't seem to do anything really. I've been thinking though, what if we had shadows while jump into it? Because we can probably do that. I feel like shadows while jump would be a good idea. I just want to see how it works. I'm just not adding something like sparks while jump because sparks while jump code is incredibly more complicated than this. It's actually pretty damn complicated. Oh boy. <laughs> how does it work even? Oh, I need to dash it for a while. Okay. Alright, well jump. I wonder how it works. Follow not touching wall, okay, so it just does a wall jump. Right. Manage actions. Well you do you really want a slide move? I mean Think about it, dude. You already have a spin. What you need, in the other hand, is a way to cancel out of a spin. That's interesting. We can do that. So... In rolling... What you can do is that... Rolling... Uh, we can check grounds. We can check if mm, let's check input variable. But this input variable is key up, key uh, key up pressed. Or I think it's logical. I don't know. I don't understand filtered. I don't understand filtered thing. Filtered uh, or or logical is basically if. If this or this is true, then how do you do a thing? It's one or the other, it doesn't matter. It can be both, it can be just one of them. So, yeah, what you need is basically, you don't need a slide move, you just need a move that uh, gets you out of a, a roll, really. Because it does the same thing almost. Unless you just put the rolling on a button, which is not too bad, to be honest. Uh, okay, so. Set action to zero. Right. I'm gonna just play a little sample. Alright, let's just do that. It just does it again. Alright, so if you press up. To get out of rolling. Cool. What do you think? Or we can do a much more interesting thing is that use a button to roll. Let me do that. I want to do that. Roll count. Roll count and roll trigger. Let's 
so where's the rolling event character is different from six because we're gonna do rolling on our own all right it has all those events no okay, okay. We don't really use the B button for anything. But we're not gonna use the B button, we're gonna use S instead. Key uh D. I think it's D, right? D pressed. And instead we're gonna set a variable. Set for trigger equals one. Alright, so now, if we're rolling... X... Oops, roll trigger... Okay, now if... Table values... Row trigger is equal to 1... And we're not holding key D... Exit out of a roll. Where's the thing? Get out of a roll. Oh, it needs to be equal to one, yeah. So essentially, you have two ways of rolling. Uh, okay, I'm going to disable this regular Sonic. Character equal to six. Moving it over here. Let's save. So we can spin and then get out of a spin. It's, it's interesting. However, if you hold a button, we spin. However, it's not coming out of it, fortunately. For some reason. I set the trigger to one. Hmm. Oh, key up pressed. Mistakes. All right, so here, what's gonna happen is that you hold the key to, to roll, and then if you release it, you just get out of it. Right, it's to avoid that ear rape. Stop a specific sample, and sound rolling. We need to do this here. We need to do this at. Whenever the roll sound is set, and I don't know where is it set. Hmm. Now I need to sca scavenge for that thing. It's not set in here, so it must be set in here. There we go. Okay, so here's what we do. We stop the sample sound rolling, and then we just play sound rolling again. So it will stop what was playing before, and just play that. And plays a new one, for example. So, it won't hear a crew. So. All right. I'm still doing it because I made a mistake. There we go. Right, now I kind of want to do a special thing. People might not like this, but I'm kind of fond of the idea. So... Hmm. Okay, so before that, I need to just... Reset the role variable. 
So basically, if we're not ground is equal to zero ball, zero ball, <laughs> per trigger, set to zero. And I think you can just do that or do a action. Different than three. Is it three or six? Oh, so many events. Six. <coughs> oh, sorry. Right, so we can do that. Uh, let me check. Okay, so if you hold the button, we roll, bitch. But only after a certain speed. However, if you hold the button while well, landing, it doesn't work. Yeah, that's a thing. So we need to make sure that that works as well. Um, there's a different event for landing. And it's this one, there's a landed over there, you see? So we're gonna go over here. I said if actually these pressed as well. For when. Mm, oh, it's in the. there, so the, this event is usually disabled. That should do it, I think. So let's do something else now. And that's something I wanted to do for a while. I think people like it. Uh, where is it? It's holding the button to do a spin dash! <laughs> Remember that shit from generations? Has anyone really liked it? Well, but if we're gonna add a, add a roll button, we might as well do something like that. So... It's very unconventional, but should do it. Okay, so there's a crouch down group. Right, right, right. Spin dash. Right, so we need a spin dash trigger. So here in common, Sonic X. Can I do this? You can only do this in ground, so. I'll do. Spin dash. How long have been go well, we've been going? Damn, two hours. Okay, so I'm gonna probably just do a couple more things. And quit. Uh, it's, uh, it's actually really late right now, so. Action D. And speed is lower than 0.1. All right. Action different than six. What the fuck? I'll we'll just add it. Oh, I forgot to set the trigger. It seems like I know what I'm doing, right? But I don't. I have no fucking clue. It just works. Okay, so action five spin dash. Might need a trigger for that. Something. Not really sure. I got to go by this up. Close to one. Oh damn. I don't know how this shit works. Hmm. This could be bad. <laughs> uh I don't know exactly how this is gonna work, but I'm just gonna looking at the formula and seeing something that I can do about it. This is a min formula, I don't exactly understand it. 
Let's see what happens. Right, so if I end holding D over here. Sorry, you guys can probably learn something just for seeing me working on it. To zero, set spinach trigger to zero. Now we need to make a way for this normally. So, just a little thing, just so we can stop this. Stop. So, variables. Cancel. I don't know, type cancel. Character is different than sex. Over here, what I'm doing is that I'm uh, changing it. Okay, so basically, if if we we're not using Sonic EX, it would just get all the f the variables from Sonic EX and just set them to zero, just so there's no issue. Let's check this shit out. The biggest mistake. <laughs> that ain't right. Ah! Did you hear? You guys hear that? That's fucking amazing. Get out of here, Nvidia. I don't give a shit about you. So. Ah, no. Why is it full screen? Right, so what I'm gonna be doing here is that I'm gonna be auto charging the spin dash based on a variable. See what I'm doing? Uh, it's hard to explain again because I'm doing essentially the same thing I've done several times. So I ain't gonna explain it again. Alright guys, here we go. Sonic even moves a little bit. Huh. Sonic jumps if it press D again. Row trigger equal to one. Let me do that, let's see what happens. Hmm. I don't think there's any need. That's a weird kind of behavior. So, if you stand still and you hold the button, 
It charges the spin dash at a considerable fast rate, which eliminates the need to mash buttons. Which is good in a way, but I hear a lot of complaints about speedrunners when it comes to that. I don't seem to like it at all. Right. So, let's summarize. We have added a dash. I mean, I should play this with a controller. See how it is. Oh, nice. And my PS4 controller, uh, R1, does the spin dash and. And the other button dashes. So if I if I roll If I hold this button, will it land? Oh, not really. Because I have to be holding down. Hmm. Interesting. So, what do you guys think of my custom, my custom classic Sonic? There's more we can do. This, this ain't it. It's more. But so far, this is it. Uh, if there's still anyone around, what do you feel like I should add? If there is anything. Um, this is it, really. I'm just I'm gonna quit after this. It's mostly just showing off. So yeah, we did it, guys. To be honest, if I made a. Uh, classic Sonic game nowadays, it would play like this. Shockwave attack. Well, if I had the animation for it, maybe. Let me to add the drop dash. I can. But now all Sonic has a double jump. Drop dash feels kind of weird to add. I can. Well, I guess it's just copy and paste it from ATSDX in this case. And then I'll, I'll change it to... For, so you have to double jump you under to do it. Instead of just holding the button. I also probably should also add Shadow's Jump. And you're gonna see what I do in the process. I don't know if I'm gonna be doing that tomorrow or when I'll be doing it. I think I'm done for the day when it comes to doing this, but... I'll be adding the one for my TSCX because that one is... It just need, need to just tad a bit more fixing. Then it could be quote-unquote perfect. But yeah. Alright, drop dash. Shadows wall jump. Anything else? How this power handles in a boss fight. 
<laughs> nice. You just rush him. The true blue blur. I can't add the spark sergeant. Hmm, a light speed dash. I could try to. I'm not really sure about it. I haven't actually added a light speed dash in in this engine. So I'm not really sure how things are gonna go. It's it's complicated. Oh yeah, there's the black backflip. So I need to add that. having fun running around. I think I made a fun, fun little thing, guys. I also made Classic Sun like way more agile. Like he's, he is faster, he accelerates faster, and he moves faster, and he does everything just faster. Because I changed some of this, some of the things. Okay, so here is regular Classic Sonic, by the way. Let's play with him for a little bit. Ooh. Slow. Yeah, can still go fast though. But you need slopes. All of them. It's a good thing, but we can have both. We can have reasonable fast speeds and slopes. <laughs> Long jump from Mario 64. <laughs> I don't know, dude. <laughs> Maybe you could add a rolling jump, like, just, but it's kind of useless because it's gonna be weird. You have to hold down and jump. I didn't run, cl run classic at all. You can only go so fast. And by the way, dashing only leaves, leaves you at a simple speed. Like this is how fast you go with dashing. If you want to go faster, you need slopes like this. Check that shit out. See how much further it went? You still need to land on slopes and go through slopes. And this spin dash button is, in my opinion, not a bad thing because I've seen speedrunners complaining that they, the button mashing just gets really weird when, you, when you're doing that, so might as well just do that. No, not, not guns? Come on! Yeah, one thing too, I can, I can just uh, accentuate the effect of slopes on Sonic, which is another thing I might, I might add. I just made a classic Sonic more agile. I have not changed the, the principles of the thing. It's still a game where you have to go through slopes and do all those slope jumping things. For me to get somewhere over here, I have to do the slope jump. There's just more that I can do, really. You know, you know when Lang made, made Utopia, he did not get rid of the homing attack, you know? It's not a terrible idea for 3D. Adding a double jump is not a bad idea either, it's a good idea. Double jumps uh, change more what you can do with the platform, for example. It can allow me to go down here and then double jump into a platform that might be here. So let's say this thing over here doesn't exist, right? What we can do is that we can go down, the double jump, and now you're here. Now there's just a lot more we can do. You make the super mobile character. You know that I'm also, also going to be making a level for this character. So I don't know which assets I'm going to be using. If anyone's willing to make level assets for me, custom ones, it'll be great. Uh, but yeah. Oh, I ran out of time! <laughs> Alright. I think this is it. <laughs> okay, guys. That's it.
No, I'm not gonna be out of rails, dude. Rails are like ice. Just add ice. Anyways, this is it. I finished it. And... For now, anyways. And if you guys have anything to say, I'll be here for like two more minutes or so. Just say anything and I'll see what I can do. Uh, you seem like you're trolling era. It's cool. Oh man, I did four hours of video today and the first two hours are just garbage. Well, I mean, doesn't they don't exactly have to be beefy uh, melee attacks? So. Yeah, maybe. But then again, I don't really know. I'm the, not really sure if I'm gonna be adding melee attacks. Really, it really depends. Oh man, the slippery floor is actually kind of hard. That's a gimmick, though, Blue Storm. It's not a an, an action. It's not a character action. This is already uh, error. This is already an engine fully working. Come on, snowboard physics. <laughs> uh, so I think I need to add uh, backflip and wall jump. And after that, I'm not exactly sure what I'm gonna do. We'll see about that. And uh, I think after doing those things, I might start doing level design because I'm already done with most of it. So for level design, I'm not exactly sure what kind of assets I'm going to be using. I'm just going to be adding an extra level and I'm going to be calling this the Not So Simple Worlds Plus. And this is it. Also, you know, I need to do some changes to the menu and make this specific Sonic default in this engine. So yeah. Alright guys, this is it. See you guys some other time. <laughs>